Alright, hey everybody, my name is Yanther. So I wanted to start off by just doing a little bit of cleanup. Uh, I didn't really like how the uh, five bar coil area was just sort of like a little wall going on. I wanted to make it look more natural. So I kind of spiced everything up a little bit. Added like a few more nature here. And then just kind of more like randomly placed so it doesn't look like they're just like set up as a wall. Uh, same goes right here. This one just kind of set there. I added a little bit of a hill section, some more trees and stuff to kind of block everything off. Um, the same thing I did over here, I also did over here, so I added some more random nature. Uh, there's also some right here. Coming up through the Lesser Matosta area, in this section I actually moved these way up. They used to be about here. I moved them up so they're right next to him, uh, so that as soon as you come up to about vision of these and are able to attack it, uh, he's just going to be right there ready to attack you. Uh, the same thing kind of goes for the other side. You, you come up through here. You're going to immediately get ambushed by him. As far as all of this goes, I kind of made it a little bit more rigorous. So I kind of pushed this one out a little bit. I added another one here, so we have to really come back. He's just sort of there. And the same thing goes for up here. I kind of pushed this out a little bit more. And I threw some more random nature over here. And I kind of blocked this whole area off. Before, it was the whole map was kind of like a... Uh, you can see it pretty good right now. These sections were connected, so you can kind of come up through here and then come up through here. Um, the current design I like to kind of go with is you either come up through here or you come up around the back way through here. So you either come up through here or there. Then you come up through the lesser Matosta area and then you almost come into like a Matosta layer. And I'm going to put a boss back here. Kind of carve this out a little bit and sort of set up like a tiny little open arena. I think that will facilitate a boss fight well. And then coming up through here, this is actually going to be the next portion of the uh, part I'm going to develop for, which is going to be like the fire, fire arc coil boss fight, and then some other stuff's going on down here. But that's just sort of my like, little cleanup going on. I just want to make everything look more natural so it doesn't look more game developy. It looks more like a uh, real world. Alright, so I really want to start finishing off and finalizing this uh, development for the fire arc coil. I'll show you a little bit of how he's uh, currently playing. As you can see, he's shooting a bunch of fireballs, moving around, etc., etc. Um, I think I have two total features that I want to add left. So I'm thinking of adding this sort of desperation mechanic, where as the enemy starts to get a lot lower in health, they start to kind of attack faster, or any sort of stuff I can think of, where they're just kind of like really trying to kill you because they're almost dead, so they want to gain some level of desperation in their all of their actions essentially uh, the other major element of the fire arc coil is when you do kill him uh, this is going to be the character that's going to drop the first uh, major spell so as you remember from previous that's a little easier if i just bring it up um, if you remember from previous vlogs um i had some lesser healing and lesser fireball spells i want to have the fire arc coil drop the lesser fireball spell for you so what this will do is as soon as you kill it essentially you'll just auto unlock it and it will will make a little feature so it just auto populates on the spell bar but then you'll actually have a pretty solid uh, fireball spell so that when you go ahead and oh it's a little hard to show off in this let me uh, switch views real quick so as part of the game design i want to have the fire arc crawl probably around here um he's going to drop the lesser fireball as mentioned before and that's going to be a good spell to be able to take in here and be able to fight the Matasta with. Um, as far as the Matasta's reward goes, I think it's probably going to be a new disciple. So then you know, have either two units or there's going to be another part over here where you can get a uh, third unit. Um, but I think that's the current direction I want to go in. I'm going to go see what I can do with the desperation mechanic. I'll let you guys know. Alright, so I've got something mocked up here. So I've got this little desperation variable here. Um, Essentially, it's pretty straightforward. We're just using turn it on if we're using it. If not, just turn it off because this is a global unit feature for any unit to be able to take advantage of. And then here I got, I just want to set up one simple little trigger. So when the unit is at 25% of their max HP, it's going to trigger here. And then the desperation bonus is actually going to be uh, quite simple. We're just going to be basically taking the attack speed bear or attack speed as it's being run through any existing statics, status effects, or anything else on the character. 
and then reducing it by this value, You're effectively making it so that we're cutting cast times in half, essentially. I will see how I like this during actual gameplay, but a little bit more on the code itself. Let's go ahead and hop over the main part. We got our variables here. They're all set up. And the actual calculations being done here. It's already had a little mechanism set up for altered attack speeds, and this was for your status effects. Uh, in this case, this, this is going to be a global unit uh, feature. Anytime this unit is at 25% of their max HP, they're going to be engaging this uh, aspect. And you can see the calculation is doing pretty much what I was just mentioning before. We're just taking the value and then reducing it by the uh, the full cast time value. So if the cast time is, you know, 5, for example, and our reduction is negative 0.5 over here, that's technically just taking it and reducing it by 50%, as was noted in this code here. So let's go ahead and show that off. Pop in here, grab my Disciple. So I hooked it up on the Disciple temporarily just to test it on out. Let's let this load. Okay, so we're in here now. Let's go ahead and cast it. So on the bottom left, I actually still have the print on there so you can see what the value is. So the default value of Mystic Bolt is a cast time of 3, as we can see down there. Whoops. Right, if I press escape, it's going to cancel the spellcast. Let's complete the spellcast. Let's come over here, and you can see down here, we've got a t uh, seconds of 3 is the uh, cast time. So then coming back in here, if I were to reduce the unit's HP down to something below 25% and do a cast, as you can see in the bottom, it cut it in half. I also set this one up as a 50% reduction of uh, cast speed. And then I, of course, also, in order to make the player actually aware of it, I put it in the spellbook, so if you click on the Disciple, you're going to get the Desperation stats. So we can just see, oh, it triggers at 25% HP, yes, and then the Altered Attack Speed, minus 50%. I grabbed this pretty much directly from the Status Effect one, because I imagine just kind of trying to keep all of the stat adjustments more universal. It's going to be a little bit easier for anybody trying to get into the game. So eventually when you're dealing with status effects, for example, it'll just say alter attack speed and you already have an idea of, oh, this is going to reduce the attack speed, which is good. Or if this was a plus, for example, increase the attack speed, which means the casting time is now slower. So I'm debating on whether or not if I want to keep this feature on the Disciple or not. I think it could be a fun mechanic on some of the units where as they get lower HP, uh, they start to cast a lot faster, so you kind of have like a strategy where maybe you'll want to get your all your units super low HP so that they're just attacking super fast and you can start to whittle down enemies a lot quicker. Or another mechanism where when they get lower HP I can just flip that and instead of her doing minus 50% I do a plus 50% so that you don't want your units to get super low on HP or else they're just going to attack real slow and be overall generally not too useful in combat. I don't know, I'll see how I want to play with it. I think I'm going to leave everything pretty normal for the Disciple, but when I start to get more additional units, I'll see how I want to play around with things. So now with all of those mechanisms in there, I think it's now time to try out the Fire Arc Oil and see if I like his game design or what I want to change. Alright, so I think I got the Fire Arc Oil how I like him. Uh, I had him a little bit too much HP before, and he, had, he just took forever to kill. So I lowered his HP. I really like his attacking, you gotta do a lot of dodging, I think he's a pretty good entry boss where you're just sort of trying to dodge around as best you can. The desperation mechanic when I was doing testing, was actually quite uh, exciting when it uh, kicked in, because then he just started shooting fireballs super fast and you're like, oh my gosh. So let's go ahead and let's just get into the fight. He's right on up here. And he's gonna open up with his first spell, so he's gonna be casting right at you to basically just teleport on top of you. And he's going to be casting all of these different fireball spells, so let's go ahead and... As you can see, so there's a bit of a, uh, kind of like, almost like a dodge mechanic the enemies use, where they just start to so sort of just run around. Uh, this happens kind of periodically. I just took that hit like a champ and died. This happens kind of periodically. And it doesn't happen too often. When you get too far away, they start to do a little bit more. Let's go ahead and keep on fighting. 
I uh, don't talk, I can focus a lot more and focus on the fight a lot more, but while I'm talking it makes it a little bit more difficult. So let's see. So he's gonna cast on me. Let me go ahead and I'm gonna cast right about here. See if I can drag him into my attack a little bit without getting hit by his fireballs. Just kind of do some circling. So the other enemies you can kind of do a lot of circling on. They seem to work out pretty good. But on this one's kind of roughly the same way. Uh, there's a new mechanic I added where you uh, they'll they'll trace you better, and I'll show it off. As soon as he starts casting his uh, teleport spell again, so here's his teleport spell. Normally they will uh, you just pick a location and it casts the spell uh, with that teleport spell. However, and uh, some other spells that are going to be added to the game, um, it tra it tracks your character a lot better. Let's see. So there you go. So yeah, we kind of track them a lot better. Normally would have probably cast around there, but it cast him right here because that's where my character was when he did the cast. So his spells are kind of, he sort of just kind of like throws them out. See how he kind of, he, he's shooting where I was essentially. And not where I'm going to be. That's a pretty good entry level mechanic. I just showed it off a little bit ago where he was uh, shooting that teleport spell. But he's almost at half, or almost at a quarter of his health. Once he is, that desperation mechanic is going to start kicking in. It's going to almost start to act like a uh, phase two. And I'm sort of slightly debating on if I want to have it like a uh, more universal, or just have it always be like a like a, a random thing. Oh, I'm about to get hit. I think I'm trapped in this corner. Oh, I think I might have. There we go. Now he's doing the uh, quick casting. Let's see. We got to so really <laughs> keep on moving or he's going to hit us. Even that spell is pretty uh, crazy. Let's see, he's at 14% health. He's also at half mana. So I think a partial strategy a lot of new newer players could use would just be to burn down his mana by uh, doing a lot of dodging. And then once he's low, you can start to kind of swoop in. He's almost at, out of mana, actually. But he's also almost dead. It's probably the last hit. As long as he doesn't dodge it. Oh, there he goes. And he's dead. And as you can see here, we unlocked the Lesser Fireball. This was actually a mechanic already developed by the uh, from in the 2D version, but it's just a little enemy dropping mechanic where they'll drop their spells or anything else I want to do. We can kind of also come in here and pull up the full description for Natash the Fire Rock Oil. I wanted to give all the enemies essentially like names and like a lot of lore behind them just to make them more interesting. But as you can see here. He has all of his information. 105 health. Uh, the Mystic Bolt itself is doing about... What was it? Five? Yeah. Five damage. And then the new Lesser Firewalls, of course, going to be doing 14 damage. Just almost almost three times. And it's significantly faster to cast. It does consume a lot more mana, though. So with this, once the player unlocks this spell, then they'll have a lot easier time going up against the Lesser Metastas. Because uh, those also have tons of health, and they do tons of damage too, so they're almost nearly as tough as Matosh, but Matosh definitely moves a lot but more around and all that other kind of stuff. So as you can see, here's the Desperation Mechanic Farm and any other details, but that's about it. I think this is going to be a good mini-boss. I'll have to find out a good place for him, and then just sort of test him out further from there and see if I like him where he is. and. All that kind of stuff, because this is just a little test arena, of course, the starting arena. Alright, so here I think is going to be the best place to place them. Uh, I mentioned in the previous clip, it's going to be right around, right after the uh, the five fire arc wells. So you fight fight these guys, uh, destroy these little resources here, and go forward, and then you're into the mini-boss fight. Of course, going over here takes you to the lesser Matasta area, uh, which I might want to think about possibly changing, maybe I can block this off with like, res or just like trees and stuff, and then put some resources right there. Uh, it's hard to decide at this current point in time, because you can loop all the way around and go and fight these guys. I kind of want to leave it a little bit open-ended, but I definitely want the player to kind of be guided with the, uh, get this spell first, and then you can go over there. Or, let, th let the player just kind of figure out, what's like, oh, I see this enemy over here, he's pretty tough. You're trying to fight him, and it takes forever to kill. And then you come over here, and you see, oh, you see also see a bunch of them that are real tough enemies. 
So you're like, okay, maybe I'll just go back and fight this guy because he seemed like he was just a single. And then you get a cool spell and you come back and over here and you're like, okay, now I can fight these guys and kill them a lot more easily without having to use the uh, Mystic Bolt since it has such low damage. Uh, further level design, we can kind of zoom out a little bit. Um, the whole level is kind of going around like this and then there's a secret way back there. And then of course the way forward over here. Uh, don't worry about this, this is all blocked off, if you remember. But the further part of the game is you're going to be coming up towards this way, and then all the way up here is going to be, I'm probably going to open this area up some more, and there's going to be a apprentice dragon fight. Um, part of the lore and part of the uh, future of the game I'm going to be working on is this apprentice dragon that you fight here is actually going to be one that you fought a little bit more previously in the story. Uh, this demo is going to take place just a little bit after everything's kind of... Essentially, it's like the introduction has gone down. And he's going to be like a weakened apprentice dragon that you got to fight. That's uh, way weakened from how uh, they are normally. So you kind of get like a taste of like the apprentice dragon. And then as you progress through the game, eventually you're going to have to actually fight a real apprentice dragon with full HP and full stats and stuff. But... A little bit of the hint about the game. I want to have like a little secret area back here. Maybe you unlock lesser heal back here. Um, you unlock lesser fireball here. I want to have you unlock another unit here. So you'll have two disciples. And then maybe either up here or somewhere, probably somewhere in the open, probably up right around here. I'm going to have another boss fight where you're going to unlock another disciple. So you have three disciples, lesser heal and lesser fireball going into the apprentice dragon fight. Or, you don't really explore too much or anything like that, Player, the player's not going to have nearly as much good stuff, but for the most part they'll probably at least have lesser firewall, and that might be good enough for the demo to be able to get through here and defeat the Apprentice Dragon and complete the demo. But that's my current thoughts on this. I'm going to go ahead and the next best thing is to actually do a fight with Mutash again, except in his actual home, to see if I like this uh, sort of level layout. It's a lot more like a triangle kind of shape where it, it there's some more closed off areas so you kind of need to be more uh, agile and make sure that you kind of keep him in probably this little area over here so that he isn't uh, getting you basically like lodged in the corners or anything like that and getting killed off or you could almost potentially drag him all the way down here and you have all this open space to fight him but that's it for now let's go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and try a fight against him here so I like it and go from there. Also for this fight, I turned on some sound effects. So you can see him here. Alright, so let's get into the fight. Here he is right here. It's a pretty, uh, pretty close space, honestly. Not as open as the uh, previous area, which I might not like. Let's see. Might do some hits on him. He kind of does get a little bit uh, lodged in. So I can dodge past all those spells. But you can kind of see it's kind of getting lodged around. It might make it easier to be able to hit him, so I might keep this. So let's do some circling. Oh, I stood right into that one. Trap me? Yeah, he did. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, let's try this again. So as you can see, death isn't too much of a big deal. I just want you to be able to kind of get back into the game quickly. That kind of thing. Let's see. Let's try this fight some more. And of course, he leaves off at his uh, previous health, which was 70% before. So you can kind of get back into the fight and sort of kind of whittle him down as you're sort of New players are basically going to be learning the game, so I'm not going to be uh, doing anything too harsh. But eventually I'll probably have a mechanism that restores the boss's HP to 4 or something like that if you die. Or some other kind of mechanism. But this early part, I might as well just leave it as it is and make it simple. 
Alright, so he's about, about, about half health here. Let's see. I think I'm okay with each hit. Just doing about, what is that? 2 minus 7, that's like 5, I think. I can't do math or run around, but. I think about 5% of his hit health is pretty uh, good enough for this. Let's teleport. And we're almost at his uh, desperation phase. Also, I guess an important element to mention, if you haven't noticed it already, uh, he does not restore any health. Uh, any of these starting enemies or starting bosses, I'm probably not going to have them do any of that. Just because it just makes it so much more difficult for the player. Okay. So he's in a tight area with the uh, desperation on, so he's kind of casting very quickly. Hopefully, I don't get killed again. Let's see. I gotta like do a bunch of maneuvers. It's quite, quite interesting. Uh oh. You gotta really like cast and then move real quick. He's about two hits until he's dead. One more. Actually, about to. Nope, not yet. One more. Let's see if I got him. This might kill him. Ooh, there we go. Cool little death sound. Now we got the lesser fireball. Alright, I think this is an okay area. It's kind of constricting. I don't think I'm gonna have any sort of like resources blocking like how I had on the uh, other areas. So you can kind of just sort of skip past this if you want. I kind of want to give players a little bit more freedom to do that, although it would of course be a pretty bad idea because you'd be missing out on the quintessential spell for any of your units essentially. So that should be Matosh the Fire Archoil developed uh, from here. I think I'm going to go ahead and possibly move into the Lesser Matosta area. I think that would be a good place to go next because I definitely want a mini boss in there. And then going forward when there's that that secret area and also going forward as you're approaching the apprentice dragon we're gonna have some more mini bosses to fight until we eventually get to the main apprentice dragon of course all right so till next time you guys take care